The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining me today for the whole counsel of God on this Wednesday, April the 19th. We continue in the book of Isaiah. Today we have chapter 5. So let's hear God's word and pray together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We pray the prayer to receive the word. Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Please show me now your ways that we may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of our own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us life, O Lord, according to your word, and we shall declare your greatness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Isaiah, the fifth chapter, entitled, The Vineyard of the Lord Destroyed. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. And he looked for it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it. When I looked for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste, and it shall not be pruned or hoed. And briars and thorns shall grow up. I will also command the clouds that they rain, no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant planting. And he looked for justice, but behold, bloodshed for righteousness, but behold, an outcry. So far the word of the Lord. In those first seven verses of Isaiah, the fifth chapter, the Lord describes Israel's unfaithfulness and unfruitfulness. Consider what care and instruction the Lord has permitted for your life. Does the fruit of your service match the generosity of his nurture? Purge the wild fruit. Through the Spirit's work, the Lord brings forth in our lives fruit worthy of repentance. We pray. Though the the world goes wild, ah, O Lord, make me a garden in which you delight, secure in your righteousness. We pray in your name. Amen. We continue now in Isaiah chapter 5, beginning at verse 8. Woe to the wicked. Woe to those who join house to house, who add field to field, until there is no more room, and you are made to dwell alone in the midst of the land. The Lord of hosts has sworn in my hearing, surely many houses shall be desolate, large and beautiful houses without inhabitant. For ten acres of vineyard shall yield but one bath, and a homer of seed shall yield but a nephah. Woe to those who rise early in the morning that they may run after strong drink, who tarry late in the evening as wine inflames them. They have lyre and harp, tambourine and flute and wine at their feast, but they do not regard the deeds of the Lord or see the work of his hands. Therefore my people go into exile for lack of knowledge. Their honored men go hungry and their multitude is parched with thirst. Therefore Sheol has enlarged its appetite and opened its mouth beyond measure, and the nobility of Jerusalem and her multitude will go down, her revelers and he who exalts in her. Man is humbled, and each one is brought low, and the eyes of the haughty are brought low. But the Lord of hosts is exalted in justice, and the holy God shows himself holy in righteousness. Then shall the lambs graze as in their pasture, and nomads shall eat among the ruins of the rich. Woe to those who draw iniquity with cords of falsehood, who draw sin as with the cart ropes, who say, Let him be quick, let him speed his work, that we may see it. Let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw near, and let it come, that we may know it. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and shrewd in their own sight. Woe to those who are heroes at drinking wine and valiant men and mixing strong drink, who acquit the guilty for a bribe and deprive the innocent of his right. Therefore, as the tongue of the fire devours the stubble, and as dry grass sinks down in the flame, so their root will be as rottenness and their blossom go up like dust. 
For they have rejected the law of the Lord of hosts and have despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against his people, and he stretched out his hand against them and struck them. And the mountains quaked, and their corpses were as refuge in the midst of the streets. For all this his anger has not turned away, and his hand is stretched out still. He will raise a signal for nations far away and whistle for them from the ends of the earth. And behold, quickly, speedily they come. None is weary, none stumbles, none slumbers or sleeps. Not a waistband is loose, or nor a sandal strap broken. Their arrows are sharp, and their bows bent. Their horses' hoofs seem like flint, and their wheels like the whirlwind. Their roaring is like a lion, like young lions they roar. They growl and seize their prey, and carry it off, and none can rescue. They will growl over it on that day, like the growling of the sea. And if one looks to the land, behold darkness and distress and the light is darkened by its clouds. So far the word of the Lord. Because Israel will not repent, the Lord will send Assyria to punish them with conquest and exile. Today, popular culture longs to be bad, and our heroes corrupt basic morality. Reject the excuses of pop culture, and instead revel in the community of faith which knows right from wrong. The Lord, our counsel, will guide us to true joy and lasting pleasure in the goodness of life. We pray, O Lord, snap the tethers of sin that hold me back and rob me of genuine freedom in Christ. In your name I pray, amen. We continue now in prayer on this 19th day of the month, the Pray For Us calendar. We pray for our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod Reserve and National Guard chaplains, especially those who have been mobilized stateside or overseas and taken from their parishes to extended activity duty assignments for those who are deployed in their families and their home parishes. Lord, we lift them all up in prayer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue now with the prayer of the church on the back of your weekly insert, beginning with Isaiah 25, 1. O Lord, you are my God, I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. On the mountains, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well-refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all the peoples, the veil that is spread over all the nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all their faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. Amen. O merciful Father, you have wounded your own Son to bring us the eternal healing of your love. Bless the sick and those who suffer, those wounded in body or mind, and those dying and all those we now name to you in our hearts. In your own time, grant to them healing according to your will, and sustain them until the day of the resurrection of the body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O Lord, and whatever else you know we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of the mercies and by the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We're bold to pray as he has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.